Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have found one of the first prediction forecast models that includes Kamala Harris against Donald Trump. We've re received some more polls. Now, my favorite model still does have Trump versus Biden. I don't know when they're going to update it, but it does take a lot of swing state polls and things like that. Obviously, Donald Trump easily beating Biden. This one is very easy to move around and look at it. And they did have Trump at an 83% chance to win, which I view as very accurate based on the polling with Biden. A lot of the other poll or a lot of the other um, data analysis sites, they had Trump around 70, 65% chance. This site was better. They added an 83% chance because it was, Trump was up everywhere. He was crushing Biden. Now, part of that was because the party was split. A lot of them didn't want Biden and it helped Trump's numbers even more. But uh, we're going to have to wait for that to update, and I will do a video when it updates. But this is kind of like the first one. I saw this from originally from Twitter. It was right here. I was like, wow, this looks like a knockoff 538. But yeah, we're going to go through the entire thing. You can see right now, they've got Trump's chances at 62%, Harris at 38%. That's basically the exact same thing as the betting. It really doesn't surprise me right now when it comes to that. I did recently, I just saw it a few minutes ago on Twitter, I saw an updated approval Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump that came out yesterday and apparently Harris was way more approved than Trump. I do find it funny that the Democrats keep talking about the MAGA people as kind of being part of a, a cult, yet Kamala Harris, who had like a 37% approval rating, just because it's announced she's running, it goes up by 10 points. Now, approval rating is normally based on how how well you govern, how she, obviously her, she does as VP. Of course, with the Democrats, that's not the case as, at all. They have a cult mentality themselves. Whoever the candidate is, they fall in line and they worship like they're a god, even though Kamala Harris has been one of the most disliked vice presidents ever. And then they gaslight and say, no, you're part, part of a cult when they're the ones doing it. And you can see right now, Donald Trump. So I guess in a day, it did go down 1%. Trump at a 61% chance, Harris at a 39 And this is a similar thing. I will say, if I could make a recommendation to this website, JHK, JHK, kind of hard to pr pronounce that, but uh, if I could make a recommendation, we don't need to see the actual polling. So you can see it says Harris has a 93% chance, Trump has a 7% chance, and then it has Harris at 53 and Trump at 39. We don't really need to see that. It, it really messes with the format. It just makes it look cluttered. So I would just have the percent chances. So Harris with a 93% chance to win. Uh, Washington at this point. I found it a little bit interesting. Only an 84% chance to win Oregon. I know the other model that I looked at, it, it always had her at like 95, 96. There were some closer polls in Oregon, but certainly I think she's going to win Oregon. California, obviously. Um, the, the bigger states, though, we're just going to look at the swing states. Uh, Nevada, you do have Trump sitting right around a 65, 66% chance. Arizona, Trump's at 73. Yeah, Arizona is seemingly... Slipping away from the Democrats right now, even after the switch to Harris, all the so-called momentum, all the fake hype, Trump has been up significantly in recent polls. The voter registration is crazy in Arizona. She might end up, Kamala might end up not picking Mark Kelly, and that could really force both Nevada and Arizona to almost be uh, Trump locks at least heavy leans if the polling continues in those states, which would really help Trump and make his math a lot easier, especially with Arizona. But you add Arizona and Nevada, that's like plus 16, 17 electoral votes. That is very good in terms of that. New Mexico, they've got Harris at a 70% chance. I think it's a little bit early for a state like New Mexico. I don't think we've seen any polling Harris versus Trump in New Mexico. But the other swing states, Wisconsin, Trump right now sitting at a 58% chance. I've seen several polls in Wisconsin with Harris and Trump. Normally, they're very close, which is good news for Trump because remember, this is Harris's big moment where she's getting all this push, all the momentum. Once that dies down and it already has started to, then I think Trump's going to be a, a clear favorite in Wisconsin, at least by three or four. I mean, these states are still going to be close. There's no doubt about it. Michigan's going to be very close as well. And then Pennsylvania will be interesting if they do pick Josh Shapiro. There are some polls going out. They did like a hypothetical Trump versus Josh Shapiro matchup, which obviously is ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense, but it had Shapiro winning by 10. That's like a hypothetical presidential matchup. But liberals were saying, well, that's so good. You know, if she picks Shapiro, that's really going to help in Pennsylvania. And it might help with a few points. Uh, but they also do weigh these states at the bottom. They rank them based on how important they are. And Pennsylvania obviously is number one by a mile. It's just because it's a pure swing state and it's got the most electoral votes with 19. North Carolina, Trump at a, around a 75% chance. I agree with that. I think Trump is sitting very comfortable in North Carolina. When we were talking about Biden versus Trump, 
I had it at around, I mean, I think Trump was basically a lock to win North Carolina. Now, do I think that, why does that change? Well, it's because of all this recent hype. If this hype dies down, you could make an argument, maybe Harris is, actually, Harris probably is a worse candidate than Biden. The issue with that is she's going to pick a better VP than Biden because Harris was such a bad, bad VP. Biden was stuck with her. Now Harris is going get, to get to have a better VP possibly in the Rust Belt that could help her as opposed to Biden being stuck with Harris from California who's not going to help with anything. So it's kind of a weird thing there, but we all know Biden was forced out and he was very old and very uh, unappealing to many of the swing state voters. Uh, another state that people are talking about maybe Harris is going to have a better chance than Biden is Georgia. Trump sitting right around a 70% chance just under it. Uh, you know, I do think Trump's going to win Georgia. It's another inner city thing. It's the ballot harvesting. Fulton County, DeKalb County. I'm sure you guys remember that. Maybe have nightmares with that back in 2020. Uh, but yeah, I, I think, you know, all of the surrounding parts, all the surrounding areas are conservative, obviously. And Georgia, it's an SEC state. You know, when I was younger, I always thought it was like Alabama, Mississippi, but because of Atlanta and how many people are in those bigger population centers, they were able to ballot harvest Georgia to death with uh, inner city people who really don't care about politics. They get a ballot thrown in their face and say, you know, Donald Trump's the devil. And that's really how that kind of works out there. So I do think Trump is sitting decently in Georgia right now. Brian Kemp is liked there. There's been you know, some bickering in the past with Trump and, and Kemp, but in general, that should help, we would think. Trump possibly, all he needs to do is just win it by a point or whatever. Those are huge electoral votes. The, Georgia is, is a bigger state than people think. It's got like 16 electoral votes. In comparison, Nevada has five, and I, I feel like people talk about Georgia and Nevada about the same, but Georgia is much bigger of a state for Trump to secure and take back from the Democrats uh, they won that state, obviously, kind of changing the math in 2020 by winning that. But Republicans have also changed it. Kind of interesting, 82% chance for Trump. It's really 100% chance in Florida for Trump. Yeah, see, this model might be a little bit more liberal in terms of, I mean, I don't agree with this number, 83% chance. I mean, I know it's based off of, oh, something could happen. But, um, you know, I, I just don't see any chance that Biden will win a state like Texas. What is Ohio? 80? Yeah, Ohio's got to be like an eight. I wonder what they had Ohio at. Yeah, they, see, this is a better model. They had Ohio at a 99% chance to win. Uh, I know this is based off a of polling, and it's like, oh, if it's an eight or nine point lead, it, but you have to take the context into it. Right now, they do have Trump sitting at 285 electoral votes, so not breaking 300, but uh, you know, a, a decently clear win. Still a relatively close election, but not crazy close. And the popular vote, Donald Trump winning by 0.3%. It would be very good for the Republicans to get a popular vote victory, although. Beggars can't be choosers, just get the win. This is the updated, you know, since they started doing this a few days ago, tracking Trump, Harris, and RFK. So RFK sitting at 0.0%. We do expect RFK to drop out and endorse Trump probably in September. He's still going with the campaign. Maybe something crazy happens, but at this point, I do think it will be an endorsement of Trump, possibly helping Trump, boosting him up by a percent or more in some of these swing states, which is going to be absolutely huge. He's not going to carry all of his 4 or 5% to Trump, but it should help at least by 1%. And then you also do have Stein and West. If they stay in, they will at least snipe a point, maybe a point and a half off of Harris. That's the hope in some of these swing states, or probably not a point, because the Democrats do do a good job of telling people if you vote for them, it's just a wasted vote. But either way, you can see Trump's come down a little bit. It's to be expected. This is her, their big moment, you know, and Trump's still sitting at 60% chance. I think we're going to see something like, you know, Trump might come down a little bit more to 55, 56. We're going to see some of this. Uh, and then we're going to see Trump go back up to probably around 65 to 70. Once you get into like early October, he'll be up to around 65, 70, and then probably close out or to around 72, 73% in terms of chance of winning going into the election. I think Trump will probably close out around uh, 303 electoral votes predicted. He probably wins more than that. Um, and the popular vote, I do think, you can see it's tightened here. I do think Donald Trump will also win the popular vote. This is just, I know people say, well, how can you be so confident in stuff like this? This is just taking a step back and understanding Kamala Harris is just a horrible, horrible, horrible politician. She does not deserve to be here. It is total DEI, and it's not just DEI for a VP. She's going to be, if she wins, a DEI president. She did not deserve the VP. She does not deserve to be running for president right now. She should not be running. The only reason she is running is because the Democrats nominated somebody ridiculously old that everybody knew couldn't last a full term. And he actually did want to stay in, but they had to blackmail him because he was losing so bad with the 25th Amendment. 
So my confidence in Trump is, uh, you know, I just say, you know, your daily reminder here, Donald Trump's winning the election. It's, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, we can say, oh, go vote. Yeah, make sure you go vote and everything like that. Kamala Harris is not going to be a president. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. Moving on down to here. Um, I don't know why this is color coded like this. I guess it shows. Uh, th- I don't even know what this is. Oh, so this shows the most likely paths for Trump to win versus Harris to win in terms of. I don't know what the, what does it mean when Maine's second district votes for Trump, Ohio. Th- th- that thing is just weird. But you can see this is the thing where the tipping point that basically tells you how important a state is. Pennsylvania with 19 electoral votes, the most important state. Michigan, Wisconsin, so the Rust Belt, and then Georgia sitting at number uh, four here. You do also have Florida and Texas because the model I'm guessing calls it a battleground state. I completely disagree with that. You need they need to remove Florida and Texas. They're not battleground states. But after that, you have North Carolina with its 16 electoral votes, very important. Virginia, Arizona, and then Nevada. And then you're starting to get into the states, probable Democrat leans, Minnesota, Colorado, New Mexico, New Jersey, and then going all the way down. Obviously, many of these states will go to the Democrats. I wonder where they get these numbers from, like the margin, Dem, maybe they use previous years, like 2020, 2016 election years. But right now they have New Jersey, uh, Democrat lean plus 11. What do they have some of these other swing states? Pennsylvania, Republican plus two. Michigan, Republican plus 1.5, 1.84. Florida, you know, those are not swing states. North Carolina plus six. Virginia plus three to the Dems. They have Minnesota plus 4.7. That's another thing that's changed with those Minnesota polls. It seems like Virginia possibly will be easier to win for Trump than Minnesota. I don't know. That could just be an overreaction based off of two anecdotal polls. Uh, We're unsure. We're going to need more data on that. But uh, yeah, and then you can see all of the states down here. District of Columbia plus 82. I do like that they list all of these states. So what is the most Republican state? Well, it's actually the third. It's not it, It's not a state. It's a district. But uh, I know people were asking when I was streaming. Looks like it is Wyoming. I believe it is Wyoming, the most Republican state, if people were wondering when it comes to that. Data is included from Model 538 uh, and then all this other crap. So this is a pretty good one to look at. I will say that. And you can see based off of, I don't know what this thing is doing. Oh, they're just running a bunch of simulations, I guess. I don't know if there's they're running these simulations live. Well, Trump keeps winning these simulations. That's ridiculous. Winning Ohio? What? Now, see, they're doing these simulations. This is, what's the point of that? But um, yeah, so that's just the updated, uh, the first one that I've seen. And then this was the uh, favorability stuff. 59K likes. This this was yesterday. I just saw it right now. Uh, pretty ridiculous, right? Like, oh my God. And, and so the dude says they're going to cheat. Guys, let's not demoralize ourselves with this stuff. And then it's like, the, the, the bullshit thing that they say with the with the fear mongering and the gaslighting. Are you going to accept the results of the 2024 election? Listen, the media is going to keep acting, asking Trump that. He needs to be coached properly. All you have to say in response to that is, are the Democrats going to accept the results of the 2016 election when they said, they said that Russia stole it and they called Trump an illegitimate president for three years and we've got tweets of liberals, you know, all over, senators, you name it, saying that Trump was an illegitimate president in 2019. That's the response that we need. But that's such a dumb question anyways, because why would I automatically accept the result if we blatantly see cheating? Just look at what happened with Venezuela. A lot of these people are socialists. They're communists that are part of the Democratic Party. They have a high propensity to blatantly cheat. We just saw it in Venezuela with the far left party locking people out, not allowing them to vote. So, so we're not going to say we're going to accept the result no matter what. We got to make sure they don't cheat because these are the type of people that have high propensity to cheat and we've seen it in other countries. We just saw it yesterday. So th- that's the answer to that. Um, percent of your state's p- state population that thinks U.S. should start mass deportation. Well, it should be, every state should be above 50% at least, but th- I mean, I don't even know how realistic this is. It's probably not a good, this is probably not a good uh, survey or whatever, but uh I, I don't know. You can take that for what you will. And then there is an update. I'm not going to go over the Trump uh, thing there, but maybe in another video. Either way, guys, that is going to do it for this one. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.